we think we have a quorum so we can begin. Two months ago, as I was talking to the organizers, they asked me, what kind of topic would you suggest for the managers of law firms for the second day of the forum? I answered, why don't we take marketing and business promotion of a law firm? They had some doubts if there would be people wishing to attend that session, but I was certain that people need to know how to maintain relationships with existing clients and how to find new clients. I seem to have been right, given the number of people in this room. We have invited to attend this session people whom I, who I think to be the best ones in marketing and promotion of a law firm, people who are versed in marketing instruments, who understand what a management partner, partner should do uh, versus the practice managers, what can be delegated to lawyers. They are Oksana Balayan, uh, managing partner for Hogan Lovells, Vladislav Zabrodin, Capital Legal Services, Denis Nikiyenko, Sibur Legal Department Head, Igor Nikiforov, Yegorov Puginsky, Afanasyev and Partners, Managing Partner, Herman Schmidt, uh, Wyden Case Managing Partner, and Andre Goldsblatt will join us in a minute. Our agenda says uh, we should be done 1.45, two hours from now. We asked the panelists to make brief presentations and then we'll make an interview with each one of them to understand what non-conventional ways of marketing they have used and have known and used. It could be helpful for you. And now let me give the floor to Oksana Balayan for a short introduction. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, everybody, for being here in numbers. Uh, a few more words about Yuri, who was modestly, uh, who modestly started moderating this forum. Yuri is the only non-lawyer here in this room, but in the panel, I mean, but he knows the legal business very well. He was the one who organized one of the most significant conferences in the community, a legal business in Russia held in April. We meet there with each other regularly, and it's very good that you, Yuri, don't lose sight of ourselves. Uh, legal services are a unique product and conventional marketing methods that people would learn at business schools or would not be properly suitable. The goal of this event today is to have a look at non-conventional methods or are best suitable for the legal profession and how best we should use them. And through the presentations to be heard, we'd like to focus on several topics how the selling of legal services in law firms is done. Who does that? Special people who are not lawyers, or are they the lawyers who do this, and which is most efficient? Then what is the way of most efficiently promoting the brand and legal services of a firm? Conferences, attending conferences, workshops, maybe publication, maybe just working properly. Next would be about many questions asked about the marketing budget of a law firm. That information is quite difficult to reveal. Law firms are not willing to disclose it, but maybe some of you would be able to provide us a broad outline. Then it's been popular to have programs like uh, align relationships, client relationships alignment. Uh, that's kind of a historical assessment of the quality of contacts between law firms and their clients. Many firms who did that early in Russia has been successful up till now. And finally, 
I would like to look at who exactly participates in doing the marketing. Partners, senior partners, junior lawyers, who else? And we would also like to know our audience today. Who of you does private legal business working for law firms at this moment? Please raise your hands. A big majority, nearly all of you. Wow. And anyone from the civil servants? Those who would like to go private. I see. Do we have any students? Undergraduates, postgraduates? No. None of students would be able to afford a 100,000 contribution. And maybe we have some someone else who is not in the legal business, working for a respectable firm, and somehow related to the legal department. Yes, this and that, plus Denis Nikienka, greater numbers than civil servants. Okay, there are things for us all to discuss, so that people who do not specifically do private legal business, but still work for a law firm, um, it would be valuable to if uh, they could express their opinions so that we are realistic. Now let me give the floor to Vladislav Zabrodin. We decided to start fast and loud this afternoon because Vladislav has a very an extraordinary presentation which should cause a lot of questions. He's well known in the community because on the remnants on McDermott he was able to build one of the most influential Russian law firms with very high quality standards and very fast and efficient marketing. And immediately after Vladislav's presentation, we'll take questions to better understand how is it, uh, how he d does that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to see so many people. At the previous session, not everyone was wide awake. Uh, my non-conventional presentation starts with that it has no title. Well, it does, but it has. But globally, if you look at the situation with marketing, as I was asked that question, I was somewhat confused and surprised because the topic was is really relevant and interesting, while at the same time it should be too professional. Everything I'm going to say is a lawyer's outlook rather than a marketing professional professional's outlook. So the topic is what works and what does not uh, in relationships with the customers and it vanishes. It doesn't work. Actually I'd like to begin with two interesting statements. Basically, they're not very specific. It is more of a something to set the tone for the discussion as we start discussing the marketing of a law firm, because the topic itself is a, is a controversial one. If we look at the history, approaches of various lawyers, especially those who are not, uh, for whom marketing is not to their liking, it's not a love, dearly loved child, especially if it is a good lawyer. I would try instead in my presentation to say that that could be an entertainment. And if you treat that as an entertainment, then every one of us could get some fun out of it. But if you view this as a real burden, a real problem um, that makes you change yourselves, um, you would get no fun. And most importantly, the outcome would be sad too sad and gloomy and not positive at all. So what I would actually like to start with, there's a principle, you know, a counterintuition principle. Um, in a nutshell, it is like this. If you find yourself in an awkward situation when a dog bites your hand, there are two options for you. One is a natural one. That would be for you to try to get your hand away from the dog's mouth. And problems are imminent because it you will be injured uh, 
and specialists who do uh, animal specialists say instead you need to try to put it as deep in the dog's throat as you can. Why? Because naturally the dog would feel it, ha it is, fa it is face ha having a problem and will open its mouth. What does that mean? From the marketing perspective in a law firm, the first intuitive uh, reaction as we try to respond to the situation is not always the best one, which means that maybe it makes sense to stop for a while and do some thinking to realize is that the way you should take it indeed for the best possible result. Maybe it makes sense to go to the contrary, to the opposite direction. Uh, every one of us has faced that more than once. We come to a store, we talk to the shop assistant and we feel they try to sell something to us that we don't need. A good salesperson would do that in a talented way. Uh, a bad salesperson would make us leave the store without buying anything. If instead we are said that, why don't you pay this attention, there's a little problem uh, with this product. Are you ready to buy it? Or maybe we don't have it, but uh, this, the store around the corner has it. We tend to become sympathetic to those people. We feel an empathy, we feel empathy, we start to trust them and their opinion, which is very important for lawyers, and that is the point in time when we try, when we start to effectively interact with them, because we understand they're not trying to cheat on us, making us buy what we don't need, but we are being told the truth, based on which we can make our own decision, a knowledgeable decision. That's why this counterintuition principle uh, is especially helpful, especially for this profession, because we are educated people, we should have some mental capacity and we need to be able to stop ourselves uh, without taking our first response, to think about what reaction would be the best one. This is a very good way of addressing problems uh, to be adequately perceived by the market because that would be a non-conventional and non-standardized way and that's why it can be the most effective one. There are three cases I'd like to very quickly share with you. One is uh, an unpleasant but well-known situation in our practice. We come to the client to see that someone of our colleagues made a mistake. The customer is furious, so they are ready to part with us. What should we do? A natural behavior would be to reconcile with losing a client or hide away without responding to the situation. I had an example like that from my previous life when my colleagues from another office made a mistake. Even It was not our company actually and I was, uh, but they were not in, and I had to see the client. My initial reaction was, no, I'm not going. But next I had to say, okay, I need to rescue the situation. And I went to the client, and we have worked with that same client for 14 years now. Why? Because by the time I met the client in a very difficult situation for both of us, uh, the way you behave, the way you respond to the situation, the, w uh, the degree uh, to which you are ready to be open and sincere, uh, to admit your own mistakes, uh, to do something wrong, but you are ready to take responsibility for that, working based on that, making uh, steps that would allow the client to avoid adverse implications of that mistake. That will make the client trust you much better, much more, than otherwise, because he understands uh, that is the way you behave in a difficult situation, and it was good. Then you will behave much better when everything is fine. A second very controversial situation for all, all of us, and generally controversial too, it's not a social network uh, related situation because a social network is just a phenomenon of the changing reality, legal environment changing relationships with clients and unless we respond to that, unless 
if we keep saying, I don't see that, I do not respond to that, and I take no actions that would help me to properly use that situation for my benefit, then I should understand that all adverse implications would be mine because I would have ignored the reality around me. Social networks are a serious problem for many corporations because people waste hours there without doing their job. They do not uh, produce any product. They do not upgrade their skills. Having said that, if you look at the number of participants, of social networks, uh, that number is hundreds of millions of people. And in a situation like this, ignoring that, ignoring the possibility of working with them, that uh, failing to understand you can renew your contacts, getting information that you would have never got in a different way, that would be wrong. An intuitive approach would be closing down all social networks or shutting down access. It is much better to understand what kind of benefits could be derived from that and who would provide such opportunities. Do you have people in your company who know how it works and can be effective, effectively working with social networks so that social networks are an advantage, not a waste for the company? for the sake of gaining additional resources. And a third case, hardly directly related to what we do, because people in legal business gradually move uh, from the legal business uh, into politics, especially if based in St. Petersburg. But still, the so-called black PR is a non-conventional situation in the legal business competition. And it does not always make sense for us to respond. But black PR is a very characteristic, very conspicuous thing. In legal business, it can concern anything. We could do whatever step, take whatever step, make any publication that would be misinterpreted. And uh, the standardized approach would be to say, no, it was not me. Someone else made a mistake. Someone else had a, had a problem. Someone else had a hangover on the morning after. And basically a different approach would be to try to understand how, what out of that could be used to gain a positive result. We know full well that uh, the whole point of marketing is attracting attention. Not good, not bad, not evil. Nothing matters except if people pay attention to you. And the more controversial your statement is, the more attention it would attract as a rule. If for whatever reason you make a controversial statement that fails to reflect even your own views, and if the statement uh, fails to be in line with uh, your corporate policy, the first option would be to refute what is said, or you can try to play it further. You can try to say that, in fact, that was you meant differently. If you intentionally work with the situation in order to achieve some response or feedback, in order to continue your discussion or debates in a different manner, then, in other words, that would be a possibility to revert any controversial situation for the benefit of uh, your company. If you look at all the three cases I mentioned above and, and try to summarize, to sum up the common features in these cases, that indeed this is uh, quite an unusual approach, which is construed not everyone expects from you, which is trivial for you. That would be an approach, unexpected approaches uh, from you, which automatically provokes uh, the reaction from the people around you. The second element is that you project two types of energy, negative and positive one, in the world outside. And the main idea is that any negative energy from the point of view of public relations could be transferred into the positive one. So you have to look at this from a high level of creativity. And the last point I would like to mention in this regard, there is no 
definition of the rights or wrong marketing. Maybe I would be alone to stand on that, but for me it's quite an evident uh, position and we are different, uh, not only from the point of view of our responses, reactions, uh, skills and experience, but also from the point of view of our beliefs in uh, what we are doing. And in any company, so you can easily find the people who easily write uh, articles but treat people wrongly and uh, otherwise. And when we treat our British uh, colleagues, they are saying that the US colleagues are terrible from the point of view of their approaches as to marketing. The U.S. colleagues, when they're trying to stand on the correctness of their investments, they're always saying that we stand our way, and uh, no one is convinced. Sometimes they believe that they're just idiots, and that provoke a conflict. And if you want to deepen this conflict, uh, then maybe it would be wise to understand the thing that we are different, and for each of us, some elements would be a correct one or if you truly believe that in what you are doing that the way you opted for is the right one then it would be an ambiguous situation and it could also produce some results if you are doing by some instruction then you will never be efficient in this area even if it is correct from the theory of marketing so these are the things that I wanted to say. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. But uh, as far as the dog is concerned, then I insist on not using this uh, example because it could be a risky endeavor. But in all the rest of the, my presentation, then you can share your views on that, where I'm right or where I'm wrong. Yes, that was a very wonderful presentation from the point of view of marketing. Can you tell us, those people who write uh, bad articles, uh, can you make them uh, write uh, good articles? There are some criteria of quality. If you play basketball, you see that there are some uh, people just of uh, very, very tall, and there are other people uh, who are not so tall but can play uh, basketball. So people can work in the uh, legal uh, company if they uh, write bad articles. If you just reach the basic criteria, you can either improve it or maybe you can use other benefits. What about the uh, non-standard uh, examples, which is very good. And my next question is uh, regarding the marketing budget. Are you ready to answer this question? Yes, I'm ready. But I think we try to discuss this topic. Uh, marketing budget is a very complex uh, thing. You can determine it in uh, terms of ratio to the turnover of the company, plus or minus of the time consumed for that, because sometimes there could be huge difference depending on those objectives that you set. For example, marketing budget is just around 5 to 10 percent of the overall turnover, but it doesn't mean that this could be specific or tangible uh, money that you spend to marketing your goods or services. It means that you have huge amount of internal resources which you spend for writing articles, participation in the conference, instead of uh, billing your clients. Uh, so you can say about redistribution of uh, your services and efforts between senior and minor partners. And if you see good work of the senior partners, then you can make the uh, other partners and um, just to train him uh, for the next presentations or participation in other conference. In absolute figures that could be from 5 to 10 percent of the overall turnover of the budget of the company, but sometimes it's not only money involved but some specific services. Can I ask the, the audience, 10 to 5 to 10 percent, is it a big amount, maybe some have uh, bigger budget, 11%, for example. 
Then, Oksana, may I? Yes, I have a question. Five to ten percent speaks without microphone. What are the key parameters uh, for you to determine uh, the uh, appro appropriate Grand Cassian of uh, Law St. Petersburg regarding the amount of the budget? There is no average temperature, so to say. It depends, much depends on what objectives are set by the uh, legal company at this precisely moment, what key services it believes uh, to be provided in, in the market. And depending on uh, the factor if the service is provided, or it may be a focus group, where to look and how to look, and all those advertisement uh, tools and budgets are different. What is the most expensive uh, service for marketing uh, the legal company? The procurement of the staff. Yes, I agree with you. I mean the staff. The most expensive article. That, that could be a very expensive, expensive item in the budget, in depending on those results that you can expect. It's very good remark. If you are to adventure into a new area, which is new uh, for you, then you should spend more time resources in order to develop uh, these resources. If you stick to the identified schemes, uh, of course, it would be cheaper. Vladislav, I have a specific question. Since we would like to give specific answers to the audience. Case one, the mistake, maybe legal expect, client is not happy, and then uh, company continues to work with these clients uh, for 14 years. What did you do? Did you provide uh, some services free of charge or what a set of uh, tools in order to convince a client to deal with you for 14 years in the future? Now we are proceeding to discussion of the concept uh, of, of our work with the clients, uh, rather than the words how to convince the clients to continue to deal with you. The uh, legal services are secondary in this regard. No matter how I treat my colleagues, how well I treat my colleagues for the successful business, the normal legal services cannot be provided without some instruments, because we should understand pretty well the goals that we are seeking to achieve. For some, that could be uh, an option, but for me, that would mean a bad service uh, which has been provided. We try to help our clients achieve some results to be successful in development uh, or working in uh, the market. Some different concepts would be involved here, and your behavior would be dependent upon uh, the specific context. Uh, uh, you have to have a will to assist your clients. It could be a business, it could be a, a lawyer, so the client can feel it, can perceive it, and all your efforts would be aiming at the uh, achieving these results without just uh, trying to protect yourself in this precisely environment. So we just dragging behind the schedule, Mr. Nikiferov, the managing partner, please n note that the change of reputation of the law. Yes, let's so probably the title of my presentation could be identified as anti or counter marketing, which practically repeats, on the other hand, uh, what was mentioned by my colleague Vladislav, which means that what has been said is the final truth. Personally, I am in the category of those people who prefer to deal with legal practice rather than to 
sell these uh, legal services, which is the secondary element once you have the love to your profession. I believe I just succeeded in that because the possibility to speak at this session. He said, Igor Nikiforov is sitting, but now it's Ilya. So using counter marketing, I successfully stress uh, this, uh, my personal skills. So for me, marketing of the legal company is the definition is counter intuition, especially the marketing of a small legal company or just an individual lawyer. For the lawyer in the small legal companies, uh, he has uh, small resources to sell, and his uh, goal is just to, to sell these resources uh, as expensive as possible. So dealing with marketing, he spent his time uh, not just uh, to provide the cheap services, uh, um, his uh, legal services to the client, but he's trying or thinking only about how more expensive uh, sell the uh, the legal services. So counter intuition. So promotion could be interpreted differently, but those ideas that I would like to share with you today, uh, they are related to the ratings, not uh, just uh, the attempts of the lawyers uh, to be as expensive as possible, and they show that we are lawyers and the private practitioners, they are independent in their activities, so we just detached uh, from one e e each other regarding uh, our services to the society and the promotion of the culture of the consumption of the legal services. In many respects, uh, all panelists and people from the audience, they can understand that they have some kind of uh, uh, favorite things or secrets, professional secrets, which they used, but still we focused on the same uh, target, uh, marketing of the legal services as uh, such. This is our common goal, a common objectives. I will dwell on that specifically, and the level of consumption of legal services uh, in Russia is quite low as compared uh, with the other uh, foreign countries, even uh, less uh, developed, so people just uh, turn to the lawyers when everything is burned down, and just to solve this problem, uh, just uh, going over the bodies to solve this issue. So what I wanted to say is just I would like to start uh, from the ratings. There are a lot of foreign publications which deals uh, deals with this uh, legal rankings. And there are some domestic publications, including uh, made by our colleagues. I don't like the U.S. approach, where lawyers or legal rankings are split in uh, a company to know over profit uh, per uh, lawyer, profit per company. So this is what I'm started uh, my presentation with. People are going to the lawyers not just to spend uh, more money, but just to find the solution to the specific problems they faced. So people. Uh, uh, one to be lawyers. Maybe you remember your childhood or school years uh, when you decided uh, to be a lawyer. So the idea to have uh, to make uh, big money was not prevalent. One maybe uh, the first idea was just uh, to be useful for the society. So ratings, why do they have this indicator as a money indicator? It's very simple, because in contrast to other criteria, which can be used to measure the scale of the quality, 
of uh, lawyers. Uh, this criteria is measurable, quite simple. So all the rest is very complex one. How to measure the amount of uh, professionalism or uh, quality. And the second aspect is that the full reliance of the U.S. Uh, ratings on uh, money aspects, many factors, which is not the attributed to our society, but of course our society is going with uh, the rapid pace uh, to the commercialization. So what should the lawyers uh, have in order to be measured? In my opinion, experience, knowledge and skills, it could be combined in one word, uh, competence or head or brains. Then reputation, it is followed by reputation, which in contrast to the first elements could be adjusted by the tools which, to which our session is uh, dedicated. So this combination of things is uh, a good thing that uh, you can always have with you and you operate uh, these uh, things. The burden, why? Why it is the burden? Because the construction uh, worker just uh, could lay a brick and then return to this uh, work next morning. The lawyer works in order to enhance its competence to acquire some skills and knowledge and then Secondly, to acquire some reputation, which is highly needed. And here I see some similar things with the marketing of the legal companies. So just briefly, maybe a brief remark. We have a comparatively higher well-being as the rest of our society and the value of each additional uh, penny is quite com complicated and at some point of view you should stop and one of the criteria of ratings so the amount of uh, transactions uh, in which the lawyer was involved so i would suggest to use another criterion the number of uh, projects from which this consultant or legal consultant refuses to participate. It could characterize quite vividly all those deeds uh, or experience of the law. It is very important since the movement of uh, global legal services mean uh, the split in the legal services of for commodities, so typical, the registration of the charter, which is the legal product, uh, which is uh, uh, presented to the clients, and specialized legal companies, which are quite competent in one specific, in one or several uh, specific areas without disbursing their, their uh, services. So this so-called full service legal companies would uh, rather cease to exist in the future. That would be very important to develop our general comprehension and understanding and respect instead of starting making additional money in those areas in which you are not uh, fully competent. Maybe you should uh, trust your uh, colleagues who are more competent than them. From the point of view of uh, social perception, that would enhance the validity of the legal practices in general. Now, as far as specific, as I believe, most efficient tools, to be used for promotion of individual lawyers and law firms in order to come to uh, the profession and gain reputation you need to invest first. Lawyers, I think, should invest not their money the way they sell soap or toothpaste, but you need to invest in by making contribution for the public good. What examples I can see from our own law firm 
a contribution to academic efforts, an honestly written candidate thesis uh, is a non-for-profit project. All you get is a big medal made of potato, so to say, but people still do it. That's important. Secondly, training at this forum, among other events, Western specialists, I think yesterday it was mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, the gap between academia and the practice. Look, the same thing here. A practitioner, lawyer, and many of my colleagues do that, including my friends and competitors. Uh, I, I think we should spend enough time to train young students on, a, on an effectively free of charge basis so that they know how law really works in life. Actually, you need to deserve that before you would be invited to read a lecture or a training course, an interim stage that I can see successfully operating in our firm is coaching for students' teams. There are several such um, exercises, moot courses, uh, space law, WTO moot court, and other programs. Uh, so coaching gives you a lot of reputation. You don't need to be a, a permanent staff member. You can go in another direction without ever formally entering into formal relationships or international commercial arbitration. Every year in April, the most William Viss moot court uh, in Vienna Students would come there to for this contest, but you also need people to serve as judges. It's not only unpaid job, but you have to pay from your own pocket for travel and accommodation that will never be compensated. And many people, including those who are much better than I am in international arbitration, they leave all their activities and go there to help students. At the same time, that's a huge instrument, a, a powerful instrument to build your reputation and to improve the international arbitration community. Another example of the activity for the public good. I think an important and pleasant thing in the life of large or medium or small teams would be so-called corporates, starting with a friendly booze or retreats with certain team building exercises around. What would be the end result of that? Some fun, some entertainment, some good impressions. Next is people get more friendly with each other if it is a real is a really good team building. So you spend your money all on yourselves and for your own good. But let me give you an, an example from the practice of one foreign law firm and a Russian industrial firm. The best corporate session or event I had or a, a corporate party that was held by one large European law firm was went like this. Everybody went uh, uh, to the countryside. They took some tools into their hands and started to build a town for a township for scouts. A summer camp, actually. There were several teams. They contested over who would build their house first. Uh, it's very memorable. Everybody liked that. On the next year, they went to build some sports facilities for the same scouts there. And that image building element helped, interestingly, 
uh, the firm to improve their own image with their own family members because every summer one of the weekends those people would be spending there where their husbands or wives had built something real so they have achieved everything they had a corporate party everyone was friendly and they made a social contribution a similar example can be quoted from the Russian experience, a Russian industrial firm read, some, read in the local paper that at a railway station where many employees lived, um, the access road was very uncomfortable. A detour that was long, oh, you need to cross a dirty, uh, a dirty ditch. And the corporate party was to build a bridge over that ditch. They went there, they put some logs, and several hours work resulted in having a new bridge with a small plaque hanging on it uh, given the name of the firm association of lawyers of ukraine has held a day of free legal aid by the way it's not so much law firms who work for the households but law firms who work for the corporations the association provides the necessary marketing efforts it is publicized in the media, explaining that people, tomorrow is the day when you can visit a lawyer to have a free consultation. It's not possible to have a, a full-fledged proceeding in one day, but get an advice, why not? They collect applications for participation, and that's it. And, of course, they indicate uh, what are the areas of interest. And the Association of U Lawyers of Ukraine acts also acts as a coordinator, collecting applications from law firms and then explaining, allocating lawyers among the customers. Look, this is very important to me from the perspective of the development of the culture in people of consuming legal services. If it is something, something big, people would not use that. But if it is something little, someone who has never referred to a lawyer, they would eagerly approach the lawyers and that would develop the culture of consuming legal services, which is very important. Two more minutes left. I think I'm closing, I'm getting closer to the end of what I wanted to share. I think the best possible marketing effort would be doing something in advance without being paid, without expecting an immediate result, tangible result doing that to gain reputation and a good reputation is the best driver of your promotion not selling the services but of promotion yes it is thank you Ilya there's advertising marketing advertising driven marketing and there is a spiritually driven marketing you seem to belong to the latter one my question is to you uh, who in the audience are familiar to you many I see, and who of your competitors is a model for you? Whose marketing is something you like from people who attend here? Even before your question, he looked at Sergei Pepelev, uh, just looked at you. He's just entered, he's, no, he's not in. I can give you a specific example. I liked very much an, a commercial that I saw, maybe you can find something in YouTube. But when it was Pepilev Gold's Blood at the time, they had had a commercial with uh, a loud music about some about a law firm. Quite frankly, I was super impressed. I would love to be customer there. You mean Pepilev for Gold's Blood? A sole question. Uh, 
the first presentation had a phrase that Americans are horrible marketing wise but you said something that the American approach uh, was something you didn't like are there any Americans in this room maybe we can get a comment on that colleagues I, I actually think Americans are quite good at marketing. Um, and I can't say that I've heard a thing here that I haven't heard multiple times in terms of the American approach to marketing. Um, whether it's uh, team building exercises or mentoring exercises or meeting with clients or working with uh, colleagues lecturing, doing pro bono services, promoting your own reputation. I mean, there are multiple methodologies and I heard them all and it's the same thing most in the US do. So thank I, you, I, thank you Caroline. So it looks like the Americans have developed a lot of uh, various tools but if you look at how the firms which are based in Russia do marketing I think the point was made that the Americans look at this and say well it's so different, it's, uh, we don't understand that. Is it the case? Я просто Каролине сказал, что кажется, что все-таки американские юристы, они настолько продвинуты, что изобрели большую массу уже оружия, марк... способов маркетинга, включая и пробона, и многие вещи, которые мы здесь сегодня обсудили. Но э, вот хотелось бы понять, когда американцы смотрят на российский юридический рынок, включая международные юридические фирмы или русские, как они оперируют, они, им кажется, что это что-то такое... Ну, вот, я знаю, многие коллеги используют такое слово, как бабуины, то есть вот здесь вот такие люди что-то делают свое и не совсем понятно. Нет, они, может быть, говорят, что слишком много нестандартного. Спасибо, Юрий, за коррекцию. Something strikes you as something, we, we don't use the tools which were developed internationally in the right way here. No, not really. I mean, right. Herman will speak to you from my, I'm at White and Case, and uh, Herman will speak to you about what our firm does here, but I don't think it's decidedly different. We do a fair amount of the same sorts of things we, we do in the United States. I must say I agree that the approach is far better with lawyers doing their own marketing with support and background information provided by non-lawyer professionals. Um, I, I don't really think it's as convincing I otherwise. Thank but you. I, I think we implement much here that we use uh, All right. in the U.S. and in the U.K. and in France and in the Far East. Спасибо. Ну, может быть, мы тогда продвинемся по докладу. Thank you. Why don't we move on? Uh, a brief commentary, if I may. Actually, what I said uh, concerned the cultural gaps, which making a Japanese lawyer do the marketing the way the Americans do it is meaningless and it's a kind of mutilation. Methods are very diverse and different. They work differently from system to system. I have a question to Ilya, if I may. First of all, uh, it was a pleasant surprise to me to hear his presentation because finally the most successful Russian law firm started to talk about humanitarian values and business ethics. So I'm interested to learn how serious you are, Ilya, about pr working pro bono. Is that something that you do? Uh, are you thinking of doing that? Firstly, Vlad, I understand your irony, but I was saying similar things uh, in an interview to the Vedemist newspaper back in 2005. So yesterday or today was not the first time. You just maybe it takes a good listener to know that about us. Secondly, pro bono has always been important in the activity of our law firm except that we do not shout about that at every corner because even without our doing that uh, there are many people coming to us for help and we take a case if it is within our terms of reference uh, 
if someone gets in, a, in an awkward situation, he or she is right, but formally he or she is not. And uh, a specific example that I can give you right now is, for instance, many of our lawyers are on the lists of these uh, so legal counselors at uh, consulates, Russian consulates abroad, uh, in foreign consulates in Russia. And regularly we keep receiving people who want our help. But those uh, problems or issues um, are not up to the fines we charge, uh, while at the same time it's obvious that there's no one else in, uh, but us to answer that question, their questions. And on average, pro bono would be with us about 5 to 10 percent, well, better to say 5 percent of our workload. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. Now we need to look at the object of marketing. Uh, Denis Nikienke is with us today, who is head of Sibur uh, legal department. Denis, while being so young, has been very active in the legal business and marketing. He used to work for the Income Bank. I'd like to hear from you what are the methods, marketing methods, that you, as the customer, think effective? What you would, what you would not like to see from lawyers? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Let me first thank the organizers of the forum for the opportunity of speaking at the St. Pete Legal Forum, such an important international event. This is a real honor for me, and thank you, Yuri, for the invitation. Second of all, I'd like to, that was previously the humanitarian aspect of our discussion, and from that I'd like to switch over to a more practical thing, which is our perception, corporate's perception, since we are our customers, because this room is mainly people from law firms, of perception of your efforts to make your services in high demand. In one business school, the lecture teacher asked the students uh, to list the features of the wonderful husband, just uh, to make good salary, uh, to love uh, mother-in-law, to have a good house, and so on and so forth. So the list was of was composed of uh, 20 items. And the answer was, uh, dear ladies, you just uh, set in unrealistic targets, so please strike out those elements which are in which you are not re really interested in. So they just stroke, stroke out the uh, features of handsome, so they just left three criteria, the basic uh, elements, basic options uh, of a uh, uh, a legal counselor or a lawyer, the professionalism and the confidence which he should have uh, among his uh, clients. This is what our clients are usually guided uh, with when they uh, select the uh, law firm to turn to. I would support my previous uh, speakers uh, who said that the legal market is uh, quite a specific one and the normal uh, tools are not working in uh, this market because people used uh, to apply to the well-known uh, legal or uh, counselors or law firms. People sometimes our corporate uh, clients uh, always uh, trying to find the the best companies uh, to find a better quality at uh, the affordable price. The pricing mechanism is a marketing tool. I will uh, leave it uh, for the end of my presentation, and I would like to say the following. Uh, what do we mean under the professional team which we try to hire in the market? This is the sense of uh, specific components and uh, criteria. So uh, knowledge, professionalism and 
skills uh, to tune to the needs of the clients and to prepare the document uh, which I will bring as the legal aspects uh, to my uh, director, to my superiors, and it won't be adjusted or corrected. I don't need a document from my uh, lawyers so, uh, which contains seven pages out of eight uh, dedicated to the disclaimers, saying that we uh, made such and such conclusions because I need uh, specific and uh, specific advice. And finally, as I said, the issue of trust the confidence in the light of the confidentiality of information which we provide to our counselors and the respect of those knowledge which this team possesses, the team we hired possesses. The selection of the consultant, the practical experience. There are typical cases, there are non-standard situation. What do I mean under the typical cases? This is a standard transaction, but companies uh, hadn't had this in, in the past. So the question is uh, to whom we apply. And we don't know companies uh, which are dealing with that. Uh, there is a magic circle. We understand the business uh, project, which can be measured in terms of uh, the costs of legal services. And we make our option. We are not interested in, in ratings, in uh, advertising, and, and in fact, what is more important here is the reputation, the information or about this uh, law firm, because we know that uh, this uh, lawyers worked with our counter agents, with our competitors, with our partners, so we just uh, simply look at uh, the limited number of uh, companies or law firms. And the only one specific element here is just that we never had this uh, kind of a transaction. So there is a uh, uh, peer contacts here involved when we just are looking for the advice of our colleagues and the scientific activities are quite important here since neither mar marketing literature is involved here because we are dealing with uh, people in a day-to-day -day manner and we get information from them. Yesterday I talked to a person who told me about uh, the case when through a social network of the transnational companies they got the information about the specific services rendered by these companies, and they made their choice uh, on the basis of the information from the social network. Uh, does uh, the Facebook work, or could the Facebook uh, be effective in this regard? I don't know. I'm not registered there, but I agree with uh, Vlad that uh, networks uh, which unite uh, million people, of course, can play their role. This is the environment which can be used for the promotion purposes. At the same time, there are some non-standard uh, situation. This is the second type of uh, cases which we face where no one can give us a piece of advice in terms of our option or selection of uh, law firms in BRICS uh, countries. We face some kind of unusual information like anti-dumping uh, investigation in Brazil, transactions in China or India. These are quite specific markets. And it is very interesting to note that uh, to, to consider whether marketing is possible in these countries. Let's look at China. Legal practices in China are allowed only for the Ch Chinese uh, lawyers or those uh, law firms who uh, went through a very complicated process of registration. So we need 
an expert in this uh, field uh, who are present in uh, the Chinese market and they can be found through the normal procedure of hiring uh, which is based on uh, the hiring rules in uh, China market. That is why this prevented the uh, development of uh, foreign legal or law firms uh, in the Chinese market. That is why rating can play some kind of a role here. And for me, in a normal situation, uh, the ratings uh, of in other markets are not interesting for me as a corporate entity. So foreign companies, uh, foreign law uh, companies are not present, uh, present there. And the same situation can be observed in India and the foreign companies are prohibited from having even the websites in India to advertise their services. That is why for our company, Seibur, who is uh, uh, having a, some business in India, it is very important to find proper people to get the advice to whom uh, we can turn to. The price is one of the key elements quite important uh, factor. Despite the previous humanitarian intervention, we heard just right now, everyone knows about the greediness of uh, lawyers and the black humor sometimes is dedicated to these uh, issues. Everything is clear, more or less. The cheaper, the better. What I mean, we as a big corporation and similar companies indeed can hire any law firm from leading or top law firms in the world. Uh, understanding that everyone would uh, suggest uh, the would propose uh, the same type of uh, services. And we of course uh, look at the price and for Sebur and for other resource companies uh, this is the cap practice we, as one of the representatives for the Ross Atom, used to say, we are slaves of the efficiency, we would like to focus our costs. That is why, for these reasons, we would like to understand and to see the budget which we are going to spend for the legal services. In our uh, sector, uh, companies are not poor, but Sometimes we have a bit of experience uh, when a uh, legal consultant uh, see the words oil and gas exaggerates uh, unreasonably the uh, services uh, provided by him. Of course, we know how much it is, and no one is going to buy a cake uh, uh, for 1,000 US dollars, including the big uh, companies uh, who are quite reluctant to, to pay double price for the services. Of course, if you see this situation, then you, s you have the same sense uh, of when you see a car at uh, 4 million uh, rubles uh, and suddenly the uh, seller says that no, it, no way, it is 5.2 million rubles. So you immediately turn away and go. So the price is very important, and the pricing mechanism as a tool of marketing and uh, further reconsideration of prices, it, it is a very important element as well. It's not the right thing to tell the clients after you have negotiated the caps that the clients uh, didn't take into account some aspects or was poorly informed or misinformed lawyers or external consultant uh, dealing with the huge or uh, medium uh, businesses, they should realize that uh, we are talking about uh, very important and serious business. And we as a representative of uh, business communities, we cannot say immediately about all nuances, nuances of uh, this case. If a legal or law firm wants to deal with uh, this uh, clients, then it doesn't make any sense to reconsider the price after they got more information about the case, because it's not the right thing from the point of view of promotion of long-term 
uh, contracts. Remember 2008 when law firms quite actively sacked their uh, officials and Claytus sometimes propose 100 uh, for services, which is which usually costs 500. Then, of course, I hire this company. But if this company says that uh, on the page 13 of the contract they agree to uh, to work in this area, but on the page 15 they reject this, then I won't deal with these companies. If you are engaged in dumping, then please do it correctly and fairly. Do what you promise. Uh, and. I must say that there are a lot of uh, stories and jokes about lawyers. There's another joke, not about lawyers, uh, it's about a car on uh, crossroads, very difficult crossroads or dense crossroads. The driver just asks uh, the passenger, look at the right, uh, in, in order to convince that there are no cars there. Uh, passenger says no, then the uh, driver continues uh, to drive, uh, there was a clash, and the driver asked the passenger, why did you give me the wrong information? And uh, the passenger answered that it wasn't a car, it was a motorbike. So the same is true for the marketing purposes. This could be regarded as an anti marketing. Uh, the topic that you didn't ask us about this uh, could be the case in the relations between the clients and the law firms, but it would be the end of their relations. Unwillingness to provide information, so just on the other hand, the, the words that we, you have two or three options, please select. It's not the right thing to deal with uh, the companies. You invite law firms while respecting the professionalism of these people, that is why we would like, we seek to get the proper advice, legal advice, and especially about the risks we could face. The consultant is believed to be more experienced and more qualified. This experience, my experience when we hired a law firm to prepare standard uh, contracts, these contracts without our knowledge, uh, they contained some uh, points or uh, risks, and as a result, the DLA company, we received the following email. I just printed out as an example of a wonderful uh, counter Marketing. Do we have someone from DLA? So I quote, we are not in a position to cooperate with the, then the name of our lawyer and we stop our service contract and we proceed from uh, the assumption that we cooperate with the people who at least understand our business or at least realize that they don't understand our business. That was the response which I received uh, from our uh, law firm. And in conclusion, maybe several votes. While selecting the uh, law firm, you used to select the right people. If I have a deal with 10K BP uh, on Sibur side, Clifford Chance was our client. Kostya Kurulanov was hired by us. He made this deal wonderfully, brilliantly. Then he go to work in the threshold company. And the right marketing is just to pick up the stars, so to say. This is the right uh, way of uh, marketing. 
and promotion uh, legal services. And the last thing I would like to say, taking, taking into account the presence of the representatives here of uh, foreign law firms, we should admit that the fair, tough and mutually beneficial competition is promoted by the presence of the international law firms. These teams demonstrated and continue to demonstrate the high standards of their operation and work, and I believe their work can give us the reasons to hope that in the future we will see the appearance of uh, highly qualified Russian law firms. They demonstrated the high standards and high quality of uh, work, and of course we will never uh, accept the poor quality or lower level. We know how lawyers can uh, work very fast and quite professionally. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Denise, for a very wonderful presentation. Do you have any consideration to use these uh, words as a motto or a slogan? I mean uh, the words you received in your email. If consultant believed uh, that it is appropriate to demonstrate their emotions, Vlad just said about this regarding the dog barking. or biting, uh, in principle, it's not a good thing. The clients are always right. That is why everyone should pick up its own strategy and to determine what he wants on what he's uh, seeking, whether to get this salary of two millions uh, just right now uh, or just uh, like other companies waiting for several years and understanding the situation of their clients. Indeed, thank you very much. I must admit that you have quite good sense of humor. I have two small questions. I hope maybe you answer the first question. Uh, the second would be answered by audience. So you have uh, non-standard uh, types. What, what types? I mean approaches. Approaches uh, uh, dealing with the clients. Well, actually, you know, uh, quite conservative. What question are you going to answer? Non-standard, pleasant or irritating? Pleasant and irritating at, at the same time. I wouldn't single out non-standard measures or approaches. I have already mentioned and I'm going to repeat. Thank you for your assessment of my sense of humor. Uh, much depends on the consultant, the deadlines and uh, additional costs and losses. It's not a ridiculous situation. So we are talking about the specific uh, people involved and their backgrounds. Thank you very much. So next topic is next topic is quite a unique person, Hermann Schmidt. Well, in case he's a German lawyer. At the same time, he's a British uh, solicitor, speaks brilliantly uh, English, and he's the head of a uh, company here in uh, Russia. I believe we can expect some non standard uh, forms of marketing. So we are eager to listen to him. Thank you. Microphone. Microphone. Uh, thank you for your kind words. I think I should be speaking in English so that everybody understands me. I'm not so sure if that would be exactly the same if I spoke in Russian. We do understand everything you say, so whatever pleases you more. If we have a discussion later on, if, you, if there are questions, of course, you're welcome to speak in Russian, but it's better for me to make my presentation in English. What I, um, what I found uh, remarkable uh, is the very first comment that was, that was made um, by Vladislav Sobronin when he said, um, 
one of the important things in marketing can be to say no. We are not good at that or the product is not good. And I believe this is actually the key to successful marketing. I believe that a good lawyer and a good law firm has to say no to work that clients bring to him a lot of times because he or she, when she, he or she recognizes that this is not where he or she is really best at. What I want to speak about today is one aspect of marketing and that is brand building. How do you build a brand? How are you recognized as a law firm? There are other, client, other aspects of marketing that is um, uh, reclama. Uh, there is, um, there is uh, 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 sending materials, answering to, to requests for proposals. All this is also important, but it seems to me that brand building is in the center of all of it. And it is important not to dilute one's brand. The most valuable asset that a lawyer, be it in a single law firm or in a small law firm or in an international big law firm has, is the reputation, the image, what people think of him. Uh, as Denise just said, whether people know him or her, um, then they will choose this lawyer. And all this together is called the brand. Now, um, we have also, in, in, again, in Denise's presentation, heard in, uh, that things have changed since the financial crisis a little bit, since 2008. Law firms, since 2008, for the first time, really uh, compete against each other, or they compete more than, you, than they used to. Why? Because the clients are under pressure to reduce costs. Clients expect more work for less money, the more for less phenomenon. Demand is also reduced because banks are not lending in many cases, and M&A transactions today are approximately of 50% of what they were in 2008. Now, the job of Denise and of the clients is clear. Reduce legal costs. Our job is to protect them, to keep revenues and margins, profits, healthy, so that our firms can thrive. And here is what Warren Buffett, probably the world's greatest investor and business genius said. If you lose dollar for the firm by bad decisions, I will be understanding. You, you can lose dollars, you can lose money. But if you lose reputation for the firm, then I will be ruthless. And that's, I believe, exactly right. And that should be understood by each lawyer and by each law firm. And it's important for law firms, especially the larger ones who have many partners and lawyers who all do something the whole day that nobody really sees, writing letters to clients, to make sure that they have in mind the brand every day and every minute and every moment when they send a letter or when, when they make a phone call, or when they meet a client. So my, the messages that I want to uh, bring here today are that brand building is what really protects revenues and margins for law firms. That brand building needs alignment with the strategy of the firm. You cannot just say, I want to have a brand. I want to be seen as this and that. You need to be it. Otherwise, it may work for a short period, but not in the long term. Because that is so, the brand building needs to be a part of the internal works of 
each lawyer in the firm and of the practice groups of the firm. They need to understand what they are doing in the context of brand building, in the context of strengthening client relationships and also the recu recruiting of lawyers. Basically, what the big firms as an organization do is two things. They build relationships with clients and they recruit young lawyers or also sometimes older lawyers, lateral lawyers who come from other firms who are able to deliver. That is basically what the firm does and that needs to follow the brand. The, the brand building process therefore cannot be given to professional support staff. Of course they are important and you need to have uh, non-lawyers to delegate important work too. But the brand building as such needs to be controlled and owned by the partners and lawyers. The brand building needs to be accompanied with a client focus program. So you need to know what clients you really want to work for and what clients you do not want to work for because this would make you unhappy as the law firm and the client as well. And then, um, as I said right in the beginning, uh, because it had been said before, it's important that the brand building must not be diluted. That's why being able to say no is so important. Now, how do clients choose? When they, when they go to the market, they see firms, 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 and from the outside, they look all relatively identical and also the lawyers often look identical the way they walk the way they talk is often pretty much the same so how do they differentiate this is actually a question that probably every one of the of the speakers here that are from law firms ask themselves every day at least I I must say I ask myself that question a lot now, what, is, what, what differentiates us as lawyers? I've said lawyers look the same, they walk the same. Most, at least in the big firms, know their stuff. We have all gone to law firms, we have all studied the same things. We are all working pretty hard. So how is it possible for one law firm to differentiate itself against another one? And the truth is, that the difference is probably not that big. The basic, the basic elements, uh, as Denise has said, are indeed uh, competence and trust. There is no doubt. The problem is that there are now so many law firms and so many lawyers who can instill that confidence and who have that competence. So how do you, how do you achieve it that uh, you are chosen uh, against another competent lawyer and that not that competent lawyer. Um, the answer is relatively simple. There are, for each law firm and each lawyer, probably there's one choice between two alternatives. One is, and that's the right one, to focus on fewer clients and direct all what you have and what you can to few clients. And the other strategy is because it, the situation has become so difficult, because there is that fee pressure, you go out and, to, and you try to have more clients and you do whatever you can get. You rationalize your marketing efforts, uh, you, you send mass emails, you send someone to every conference, uh, you reduce your fees, you do whatever the client asks you, so you are friends with everyone, you are seen everywhere. That's the other strategy, and I'm sure many law firms have chosen it. Now, what is the advantage when you focus on fewer clients, when you 
when you retain the ability to say no to certain work and to certain clients. The result is you are able to, as we say here, move heaven and earth. You really do what's necessary. You work the whole day and the whole night for one client when needed. You give the client the feeling, the, the true feeling, that he is the most important asset that he has. You have the time to listen to the client. By the way, listening to client often is the answer to so many problems. My view is, I've now been 25 years in the business, normally the answers to the complicated, most complicated legal problems are already known by your client. He only may not really know it, that he knows it. But when you speak long enough, you see what the commercial drivers are, and together you come to a solution that's 100% fitting and that the client likes. But you, you can have that hit, you can have that three-pager against the seven or ten-pager memorandum only if you have spoken with the client, otherwise you shoot in the dark and you cannot hit. And generally, of course, you pay close attention to everything that's going on around your client. You really understand the client, the persons with whom you work, and also the firm, the company where that client is. Oops. Now, what does that lead to? It leads to that you get better work. Better work gives the ability to hire, to recruit better personnel. Better personnel leads to better reputation, to better people, to better work. It is, it is a beneficial cycle. It's the opposite of the vicious cycle that leads you down, drives you down. This drives you up, step by step. When I was an associate in the early 90s, the managing partner of the firm I was then in Frankfurt said, we are not better than any other more or less okay firm personally. He said he was the founder of a firm, he was one of the most well-known uh, uh, lawyers in the country, and he said, I don't think I'm more intelligent than the majority of the lawyers. What, what we do differently is we simply take the time for doing work well, and we have clients who understand the value that that has and who allow us doing that. Now, how do you really get there? How do you, how do you implement it? It's easy to talk about it, but how do you make it work in your office or in your firm? The first step is to identify these really important key clients without you feel you cannot be successful. Those that you have and also that you do not yet have but that you know are on the market. Second step, assign relationship partners and build, if the firm is big enough, relationship teams. Invest in deepening these relationships. Invest time and attention. Always deliver top service and seek feedback. You don't know what associate A, B, C are doing. You don't know what partner X, Y, C, uh, X, Y, Z are doing. So you need to have someone who goes out and speaks with the clients from time to time independently. That can happen casually. It can also happen in a formal setting where the senior partner goes or where someone from the marketing department goes who is not a lawyer and asks a few simple questions how the client liked this and what he didn't like. And then you sometimes learn the most interesting things. You coach partners and associates. When you see there are deficits, you coach them. Many firms are only called firms. They are not firms. There are pools of people who sit in one office and who compete against each other and who are happy if their partner makes a mistake because then they might get the client or they may, they may, have, uh, they, they, they may feel themselves being superior. So you have to help partners and associates who are in need of help. You have to feel as a firm. Uh, you review the client teams. You don't only go to the clients, you also meet with the client teams and you have formal reviews with these teams and you reward the teams that are successful. In most firms you have either a lockstep system where every 
partner or every associate goes up every year or does not get, uh, uh, does go up every year in a, in a certain way, whether he or she has achieved something or not. In other firms that are so-called merit-based firms, you look at the individual, the individual revenue that the partner or lawyer has had. Both is essentially wrong. If you want to form a team out of individuals and if you want to build a firm that is recognized as a firm and not only as a bunch of competing lawyers, then you need to reward team effort. And you reward people in the team irrespective of whether they are the one who have signed the bill um, or whether they are the one who have known the client first. You reward the team for its teamwork. One example, um, uh, for a client team, you have client X and it's as simple as that. You form uh, a team that consists of the relationship person, which is of course a key person, other partners and associates, and if the firm is big enough, of course, professional account management staff. And if I may say this, I believe, although this sounds pretty big, many partners, many associates, and professional support. I believe the same applies to very small firms as well. Uh, much of it applies to a one, one partner firm, to a sole practitioner, but practically everything applies to any organization that has more than one lawyer. So you, you, you bring these people to sitting together and to uh, discuss their plans to make a plan, to start delivering the firm, to pull together what the firm has in its different, in its different practice groups, if it has them, in its different offices, if there are more than one office, and you begin selling not only what that one relationship partner knows and has, but you begin introducing other lawyers. Uh, now, of course, one should not do that in an aggressive way. Maybe maybe the client isn't even interested in learning about these other lawyers because he has excellent legal advice for other areas and he doesn't deem you the best firm in these other areas or he doesn't want to listen. And then you should not even try. Uh, in, in any case, if you find out, you should not continue bothering. But often, often we have seen when you do this, the response of the client is, oh, I had no idea. Why did you not tell me earlier? Of course, I, I, I like you, you did good work so far. Yeah, we would try you there also in this other area um, when it comes up next time. So you have both, but I would say more often you have the response that, oh, indeed, it's not bad. It's not bad to know. Um, then you need, this, these groups need to regularly communicate about the relationship. Um, uh, they need to be open. They need to, to disclose the problems that they had. You have it often in law firms that everybody tells about his or her successes, but nobody likes to talk about his failures. But it's much more important to know about the failures with a client so you can go and repair something. That letter, had somebody, had another partner called you, Dennis, next day and would have said, ah, sorry, <laughs> that things like that happen. I mean, it's a, it's a human business. You would have said, okay, great. That's a good reaction, forget it. This, I, I see this unwritten, no problem, let's, let's continue. I'm, I'm pretty sure that is the reaction of most normal people. But this guy didn't tell anyone and he didn't have the strength to come back and to correct it. So big, big client lost, huge, huge loss. And probably nobody knows it to this day, except they learn it today from someone here. Um, and then the feedback at the conclusion of matters is important. After every matter, there needs to be some feedback, some, some uh, summarizing, understanding, um, and um, uh, building, uh, uh, building commitment among the team. After something has been closed, we go now out for the next together. Um, and uh, being sensitive as a team for possibilities that arise for new services that can be provided without going to the client, without asking the client, but just by following the events, by following the press, by following remarks that are being made by someone casually 
and trying to understand what's going on and then sharing it in the group, not keeping it to oneself. Um, I think I, I think I skipped the rest. It's probably getting a little bit much okay. detail. Um, it's going on uh, uh, basically in the same in the same manner as I just tried to explain. Internal meetings, uh, information sharing, uh, also sharing the billing processes, understanding what in various practice groups has been billed to one client, so that that the client doesn't get multiple invoices at the same time uh, uh, without, without coordination. Um, uh, yeah, that's probably the, the most important part. Now, what's, what does that achieve? Um, hopefully. Uh, it, it achieves what I said initially what we call premium pricing. Premium pricing doesn't necessarily mean expensive. It means that the client is prepared to pay you for the extra efforts, the premium efforts that really make your work valuable, um, which helps you to recruit again good people and to retain those that you have which strengthens the internal engagement, the buy-in of the lawyers, altogether making you preferred provider or putting you on a panel, giving comfort to the lawyers that you work with at the client and the general, especially the general counsel who often makes these decisions, and it enhances both and that's important. That's maybe the most important thing of all. It enhances the perceived quality, what the client thinks he likes, and the real quality, the real quality. The firm and the work is really better. So, main message, uh, bring brand and reality together, align your strategy, Align your client focus with your brand. Don't try to be something that you are not. Say no to things that you are not good at. Focus on the things that you are good at. And do it with the colleagues within the firm. That is what we call, what we call brand building. It's of course a continuous struggle. Nobody ever gets it really right, but we need to set the goals and to achieve as much of it as we can in the interest of the best work provided to the client and in the interest of the firm getting good work, interesting and challenging work, um, making their lawyers excited and like the firm and also having a healthy profit at the end of each year. Thank you. Спасибо, Герман. Thank you very much, Herman. I have a small question to you. Do you have a head of marketing division in your company? In your company, do you have? And should we look at the overall marketing as a 100%? What did you do and what uh, is done by other departments and uh, by marketing department? Start from yourself. It depends. It's not an easy task to answer. I believe I do everything. Okay, 100%. Let's ask the audience to comment on this uh, figure. 100 percent, is it a big figure or not, Sergei Gennadievich? I don't understand what sense. Is it much? Or maybe you should delegate some uh, functions to other departments? 
you can get re easily read uh, from one of the task or services that you're interested with. For example, the booklets, preparation of booklets, list of conferences, where you should address, which you should address, maybe to approve a plan or schedule or overall policy. Maybe it should be the task uh, which should be performed by the partner. Alexana Balayan, the manager. A uh, partner who allows uh, M and A evolution strategies for the New Deal landscape. Thank you very much. Quite a long title of my presentation, but in fact, I wanted to, to say a lot about uh, marketing things. I've been dealing with these issues for quite a long time. And uh, my company uh, has been transforming through my years in this company. As so my colleagues just said a lot, that is why I would like to focus on one specific product of marketing as an example. What can be done by this uh, law firm as ours? And this product is as follows. I just would like to remind you in 2010. There was a unique merge of two big uh, law firms levels, which focused mainly on the European and Asian, Asian markets, and Hogar Carson, the second company, which focused mainly on the U.S. markets. Practically, they were of the same size. They merged, they merged of equal partners, and as a result, we receive a huge number of countries where we provide uh, legal services, more than 40 branches in 20 countries, and the range of services that we started to provide is very interesting for many of our colleagues. Uh, we have many clients, many accounts, and it is very difficult to cover all of them in terms of uh, service provision and of course we met our client uh, key client key accounts of course it is very interesting to see uh, the clients uh, to tell them about the merger that we open uh, a new branch so you should uh, get your client interested in this. After a series of meetings with our clients, we found a partner Financial Times, which was interested in using this network of our branches and subsidiaries in order to perform a unique research. Together with Financial Times, we develop a questionnaire regarding the strategies M&A in the post-crisis uh, environment and we interviewed 160 heads of M&A in different companies and corporations in US uh, European countries Russia and Asian in Asian countries so this combination of uh, various marketing measures. On the one hand, we get access uh, to the decision makers in the companies on M&A transactions, including uh, the lawyers uh, which deal with this uh, issue. So we got the results of this uh, research, which were very interesting uh, for the people dealing with that. And our clients could use this as well. And Plus, this, the result of this research uh, were presented at our individual meetings and presentations. We, I believe, found a quite efficient tool of marketing, which is a one-on-one -on -one meeting with our clients. And this set of measures allowed us to make very good conclusion. We had a presentation of this uh, research in the four jurisdictions, big jurisdiction, New York, London, Frankfurt, and Hong Kong. And plus, uh, it was followed by the dinners with the clients, and we spent uh, certain budget uh, to, for this. What was the most expensive uh, research or dinner? 
I believe the most efficient element is the individual meetings or one-on-one -on -one meetings with your clients. As a result, we published this book, book booklet which contains the results of this research. You can find it and pick up your copy here in this room and interactive presentations which we presented in many countries. It, it is highly technological, that is why it's not working here. It's just like a quick movie, quick change of uh, pictures, and as a result, the results of this research are briefly presented here. These are nine key elements which as a strategy of M&A are clear to us and which were presented to our accounts or uh, key clients. You can pick up your copy and uh, read it. Now it, it is clear that for the 34 respondents, if they acquire a company, they face uh, problems with taxation authorities and regulators, which can be a huge problem for them, 34%. And it was very interesting to see that only 23% of strategists which are actively involved in M&A uh, transactions believe uh, Chinese market as quite promising a market. Only 7% regard uh, the Russian market as the promising one and the research produced these uh, figures and a number of economic parameters. More than 55% of all transactions in M&A are financed out of uh, own uh, means, not from the debt finance, and in crisis situation uh, only 9% believe uh, the crisis as a deterrent for M and A, so I just wanted to briefly introduce this uh, presentation, and one I won't show this uh, presentation uh, completely. If you're interested, you can ask me and get some information about the results of this research. So this is a co-branding. Yes, it's a brand, uh, but it's not only a brand. Of course, it can reinforce the brand. We would like to get closer to the clients to explain what we precisely doing. We have such specific jurisdictions uh, like Vietnam. Many companies are involved there and they just uh, work in uh, niche uh, areas. It's not only a brand. Did you think about uh, dealing with the Russian publication, the, uh, the same kind of research, in order to move deeper into the Russian market? I believe Vedomosti would be quite appropriate publication. Maybe someone is willing to have the same research. Could you not want it to? You want it to make a comment or? Hello. What, what should I do first? To make comments on Oksana's presentation? Yes, I agree. It's a very wonderful booklet. We have practically the same one. A little bit, a bit different, but yeah, I believe everyone in this room can say the same. Thank you, Entry. Well, you haven't joined us. You told us about a wonderful movie. What kind of movie are you referring to? Maybe. So then, maybe. We will talk about the alliance with the British uh, law from BLP. Would be presented by Andrew Goldsbrot. Now we have only 15% of air, fresh air, left in this room. So I believe we. You, you propose that I skip my presentation in order to save some air, fresh air in the room. Thank you very much. Sorry for being late, but I believe I uh, 
managed to catch catch the overall tonality in of the discussion and of course it was very useful for me to listen to the Danish um, to presentation of uh, Danish. It is very important for us to listen what about the needs of our clients and at the same time I would like to come back to the title of my presentation. Of course the the idea should come first. The idea is what actually uh, is growing into the strategy. In the end of 2008 we uh, had this idea, not just from the scratch, uh, we got it uh, because of the changes in the market and because of the understanding uh, of the fact that we uh, live and work in Russia, but the huge number of uh, M&A transactions mentioned by Oksana is uh, done with the application of different uh, jurisdictions. Oksana, can you confirm this? Yes, I do. And realizing all of these elements, we understood that we uh, had to move further in, in searching for different uh, niches and ensuring high quality of uh, standards of legal services without these elements and it was quite impossible. That is why we merged with the British uh, law firm, which at that time uh, was developing quite actively in London, Baron Pesner, and we understood that once we are lucky enough to get the merger with these companies and to provide the strongest legal team in Russia, with the British potential, uh, we believe that we would be very fast in moving uh, in other niches of um, the markets and those clients with the, which the uh, respected companies sitting in front of me and uh, to my right and to my left are sitting. Realizing all this, we drafted this strategy. Without the strategy, it was practically impossible to develop a company and market it, these services. Uh, and of course, the experience of those people who are able to uh, analyze these uh, things uh, and provide some visions and ideas. We started to implement our strategy and everything should be tuned to implement the strategy, starting from the HR issues, uh, the way you dress, and uh, otherwise you never reach the targets that you set. And at the same time, you should understand that strategy is not a dogma uh, which cannot be changed and uh, should remain the same throughout your life. It should be quite uh, respondent uh, to the market changes. Maybe you remember our first conceptual marketing slogan was the first uh, law from Holzblatt BLP. So just to indicate the history and brands and uh, our clients, but we are the same company, British company, Goldsblood BLP. Uh, we have a brand, we have 700 lawyers in London, 15 in Singapore. Recently we opened branches in the Frankfurt and Berlin, and we are developing quite successfully in the direction of classical law firm and 10 years ago BLP was a classical network uh, com companies, so strategy was uh, drafted and we are moving in this uh, direction. Let's come back to the Russian Federation. After working very closely in Russia, we realized that our motto slogan starts playing against you because the novelty which was as an attraction uh, to our clients starts to fade it out uh, because our big clients started to say that you are very good as a local company but you remain the local and no one understands either you British or Russian companies so what what is now in the right in the right place
Please indicate the way to the right place. You are not from a comedy club, I guess. I believe. May I finish with my presentation after that? No. First of all, you should indicate the way. Please. You see, they just interfering with my presentation. So coming back to my brand. After three years, we understand that we have some hindrance because of using this slogan. Whether it's a joint venture, British company, or Russian company, Goldsblatt, or who else? So we change our motto, and whether you noticed or not, so we implement the targeted strategy. We the Russian legal practice. Uh, uh, Goldman BLP because it is very important to stress our international nature because the first slogan just met the ideas of our clients which sought the highly professional legal expertise. Once we reach this goal, we change the position and the tools and we are no longer willing to be the first uh, Russian British uh, company. We are Russian uh, law firms which has powerful legal resources and on the other hand uh, international resources. We actively continue hiring the experts in other jurisdictions uh, other than uh, Russian ones, but the core team remains uh, composed of uh, the Russians. Uh, we work in uh, Russian corporate, uh, British, U.S. Uh, uh, law, so there is a globalization of the world. It's very difficult to provide uh, high quality services without being globalized and uh, managing the traditional uh, uh, legal institutions, financial classical institutions. Without all this, uh, you will be uh, without like the hands, and you will never be the highly professional consultant. Possibly sometime down the road, we could get rid of the gold's blood, uh, according to Oksana's dreams. But there must be preconditions for doing that. Uh, what? Uh, when we can say that we've done with that and we need to change to grow resources and strengths. I don't want to abuse your time. I just would like to refer to your talk, Dennis not Dilly Piper, but the, the previous one in Claire's, who worked for $100. They were, the figures were given just for information. Well, link ladies never charge $100, you know. Never, 100 units. I think you are quite right. The main thing is to get in the customer's shoes and the client's shoes to understand what he wants and what would satisfy the client. But it often happens that I wish to have clients like you are when, who, when develop, uh, identifying the volume of work, it would be clear that uh, this much of work is to be paid for with this amount of money, but uh, very seldom the clients would understand that the volume of work would grow with time. He's nodding, Herman uh, is nodding because he agrees with me, I know. So I'd like to express my asking to the clients, we do our best to make it on budget, but when you get three times as many new ideas, new inputs that we had never known before, uh, we'd like to find, to find good understanding from the client, because we're all interested in making the deal happen rather than destroy it, and our motivation should be as strong as the client's is. You're quite right. Uh, if you promise something, you need to be good on your word. You're right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for a very good presentation. And Oksana, 
wanted oh we also have a book i'm not i'm not done uh, as part of implementation of our strategy we published a book uh, the using of english law in russian transactions a wonderful book Oksana has this book. Uh, the chief uh, lawyer of Neshekanom Bank asked me for a copy and then asked for 10 more. But I haven't brought it with me, too heavy to carry. Do it for the next one. Okay, I will. We have several questions. Dennis or Oksana? Andre, uh, we are discussing the marketing methods, but maybe only few people in this room will know that apart from active professional activity, Andre also is a blogger for the Vedomosti newspaper. Yes, it's just my hobby. And last year, especially following the results of that store's can uh, case, uh, there were recommendations on how to behave in a hotel, uh, what to do with your towels, what to do with a chambermaid appearing. How many clients uh, did you manage to attract through this kind of marketing? And what kind of clients? Oksana, you know, you know what? All clients with a good sense of humor appreciated that. A good answer. So it's about loyalty, isn't it? Yes, it was. Okay. Then Dennis's question now. Yes, please. Well, let me be uh, dull a little bit. I actually wanted to ask this question from Herman, and now let me do the same from Andre. You know that from the Russian market, uh, Cooper Brothers left the Russian market. You know what's going on with Leboeuf? The the stopping of the activity resulted from what? Unfavorable circumstances, a marketing-related problem. What is the reason, do you think, uh, for a law firm to disappear? I think the key reason reasons are two, lack of strategy and failure to understand the market, although it sounds banal. But the main reason, I think, is uh, compromising on reputation. That's the most dangerous thing that could result in the liquidation, like it happened to Arthur Anderson and Leboeuf, as far as I understand, although with them there were many more reasons, including a very large leverage that they had had that they couldn't cope with. But the main thing, no compromise with your reputation, whatever the profit you may be losing by doing that. I also think there are two reasons for that. The legal market uh, was really changing and they had failed to understand that, especially Dewey. That was, and with the others, there was a very special reason. Some criminal things had happened there, committed, by the way, just by just one person based in Houston, who shredded uh, several sheets of paper and that destroyed an entire firm which shows how dangerous it is to be a partner to a large company. You are heavily dependent on what just one person does, although you may not know him at all or her. In case of Dewey, as far as I know, I think the market was changing and they failed to understand that and they invited 20% of new partners starting from 2008 and they had guaranteed to those new partners their salaries. Usually what the partners would get uh, would be equity, risk capital. If a firm is unsuccessful, everybody gets little or nothing except for associates. 
uh, but they guaranteed to the 25 percent of new partners certain amounts to be paid to them as salaries and they appeared unable to do that and they had taken a big loan and very quickly it all perished one brief comment on that a simple example for people to know why a law firm can go under Kodak, do you remember Kodak in 1993 when I had started working with them? We were helping them to build a factory in Yaroslavl to manufacture chemicals to process uh, film. And they would say, we believe in that because the film and the chemicals will be around always because people love to use the red lamp to do it with film camera. And Kodak had made a strategic mistake. It was them who had invented the digital photography while failing to understand the market trends. And now they went under. That's one of the main reasons, by the way. Scuderami and Dewey did the same. They failed to understand the market trend and they were not able to come up with an innovative product and the clients are very demanding, more and more demanding every day. Of course, we must respond to the market change very quickly, aggressively, so that we are ready to be at the right place on the right time. We have about three, just one thing to add. Just one of those days I talked to Leboff and in fact, there was a serious thing about managerial decisions taken. Denise is quite right. In the beginning, initially, the service parameters, uh, especially in the early 90s, had not been in place, and no Russian law firm or individual lawyer had not been able to provide a high-quality service, as was the case with imported services. But this is not to say that the situation has not changed critically. Dewey had a decision-making system, and Skudorami had had the same before, was that uh, managerial decisions were not aligned with the market conditions in America or globally, while an international law firm is a very serious mechanism indeed. It's a machinery that requires to be well understood not only about what happens at, at the headquarters, but you need to understand all other regions. And decision-making in a situation like that is impossible if you are isolated from other officers. And as far as I know, decisions made by them were not transparent nor adequate. And by and large, they were based not on the company's goals, but on the goals of individuals who made up the decision-making team. Well, we have about 5% of oxygen left, so we can stay for five minutes longer in this room. Don't be looking for oxygen with your eyes. No use. If you have any questions to the panelists, so we can take a few from the room, from the floor. We can allow... Okay, even better. I think we have told everything and all other things uh, can be explained and discussed informally. Oksana Balayan will make the uh, concluding remarks. Well, it's been so interesting and bright, it's difficult for me even to summarize that, but I have compiled a number of points with which to start good marketing. First of all, marketing is an entertainment from which you must get fun that the tone was set right in the very beginning by Vladislav. So I have kept this point. The strategy indeed is a basic thing determining many, many other things. And the marketing option you select for the promotion and marketing of your firm and product, Andrea and Herman were unanimous in that. And people and quality of services are one of the decisive factors for the whole marketing to be successful. Denis spoke about that, and Ilya 
suggested that they need to start working with the students. And of course the phrase that everybody memorize, that you need to put your hand as deep as you can in the mouth of the dog or the client, whatever. But that's an image that will be memorized by everyone here. Thank you very much. I think we have shared experience we've got. Oh. And many of us have held our positions for long, quite high positions. It would be great if we could continue our dialogue informally right now or maybe later, one-on-one. -on -one. You're welcome to write emails to us and let us meet again. Thank you.